I always figured if you're going to have a tiny little PC, then you might as well have a tiny little monitor to go with it. This is the Elecro 7 inch touchscreen monitor, and I want to see if it's any good. So let's put it through its paces right here on Jeff's Pie in the Sky. <music> Hello once again, Pi Geeks and Techno Nerds all over the world. My name's Jeff, and I'm an IT professional who's been in the industry for over 30 years. I've been using Raspberry Pi since they first came out, and I want to show you some of the things that I've done through the years. If you like what you see on this channel, please hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you want to see more, and hit that notification bell so you can be told when I put a new video out. Let me know in the comments how you get on with little Raspberry Pi monitors. And if you've got any suggestions for projects that you'd like to see me do in the future, put those in there as well. Also, there's a new feature in YouTube called Hype. You have the power to hype any small channel of your choice. And it would be my honor if you could pick Jeff's Pie in the Sky. All you have to do is go into the YouTube app and hype this video. You can do that for three different channels. Or you can hype three videos on the same channel. It's all up to you. But no matter how you interact, all of it really helps the channel grow. And I'm trying to get to 5,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So any support that you can give will be very, very gratefully received. So every now and again, I find myself in a situation where it'd be really useful to have a little Raspberry Pi set up with a little monitor somewhere, maybe because I want to check a log file or just have a website open in front of me that I can keep an eye on. I don't want to use my main monitor for this because normally I'm using that for some other purpose. And to that end, I picked up one of these, an Elecro touchscreen monitor. Now it's only seven inches on the diagonal and has a 1024 by 600 resolution. So it's certainly not huge. But just for those use cases where I just want to monitor something or I just want to have an always on display, it's really, really neat. And as you can see, the money's not too bad. I paid just around £34 for this. Now, there were a few other accessories that I picked up for this as well, and I'll go through those a little bit later. But for now, let's just take a look at what you get in the box. So here is the box as you receive it. Opening this up, you get an instruction manual and a CD with some drivers on it, although I've never had to actually use that. Underneath that, you get a USB cable, which is USB-A at one end and micro USB on the other. A small HDMI cable. And a handy little HDMI adapter that goes from micro HDMI to full size HDMI. So this lets you use this with a Raspberry Pi 4 or a Raspberry Pi 5. Removing the foam separator, you can then see the screen itself, and apologies for all of the reflection here. With the screen out of the box, you can see the actual circuitry on the back is relatively straightforward. You have an HDMI port at the top, and then you have two micro USB ports. Now back in the day there was an older model of this, where one of these USB ports could be used for the touch interface, the other USB port would only be used to provide power to the display. But with these newer models, you can use either micro USB port to do both jobs. And in terms of connectivity, that's it. Now, just to make my life easier, I also bought this little bracket here. And this is sized appropriately for that screen. So it just provides a stand that you can insert the screen into. These four standoffs on the back sized appropriately so you can put a Raspberry Pi on there. So this way you can have a completely standalone Raspberry Pi and screen that you can position anywhere you like. Now for my own purposes here, I also bought a right angle HDMI adapter and another micro HDMI to full size HDMI adapter. I'll show you why in a little while. So now I'll go away and I'll put the screen into the bracket and get everything connected so you can see what it looks like. Now here is the rear view as we're looking at the back of the monitor with everything constructed. Now what you can see here is I've got the HDMI cable plugged in 
through the HDMI to micro HDMI adapter and then off into the HDMI port of the monitor. Now this is actually putting quite a lot of strain on these ports and the micro HDMI ports on the Raspberry Pi are notoriously fragile. So this is why I picked up my own micro HDMI to HDMI cable and also that right angle HDMI adapter. It makes quite a difference to the amount of strain that is applied to these ports. So here is my updated solution. The right angle HDMI adapter allows the HDMI cable to actually come up rather than away from the monitor. This then comes through my own HDMI to micro HDMI adapter. And this has two advantages. Firstly, this reduces the amount of pressure that's being put on the Raspberry Pi's micro HDMI port. Secondly, you can also see that the HDMI connector isn't protruding so far to the bottom of the monitor, so the monitor can actually stand up more cleanly. And if I now stand up the monitor, you can see it actually does look pretty neat. But now, let's see how well it performs. Now that I have my Raspberry Pi booted, you can see that the screen actually looks pretty good. Now do bear in mind I am filming this with my mobile phone. So there will be a little bit of interference here. It's not perfectly representing the actual clarity of the screen here. It's really pretty good. Just to demonstrate the touch facilities, if I go ahead and click the OK button, you can see that that then just cancels that warning message. So the touch functionality definitely works. Well, let's try a couple of other things. Firstly, I want to start up a web browser. Now that's started up just fine, and you can see the little on-screen keyboard right at the bottom of the screen. Now, if I bring in my finger here, I think you can tell one immediate problem. This on-screen keyboard is absolutely tiny, and I've actually found it to be borderline useless. If I try to drag this around or increase its size or anything like that, nothing seems to work. There is a little menu I can bring up here, but it's only regarding the actual style of the keyboard, not the size. And I find this a really limiting factor. But of course, this is software. This is nothing to do with the actual screen itself. So I don't want to be too critical here. However, one thing that I am a little bit more critical about is where this keyboard is so tiny it does mean that the accuracy of the touch sensitivity needs to be really good. And I actually find it to be a little bit imperfect. And as you could see there, I was trying to type in google.com and I got it very wrong. And where you can see just the size of my finger, and this is right up against the screen here, you can't really see what you're tapping. And that means the keyboard accuracy here is pretty much just guesswork. So that's a real big downer. However, if I navigate to a website such as this one that's showing my web cameras, where I've enabled functionality so that if I click on an individual camera, it will expand it to full screen. Now, since I don't have to be super accurate with that click, this works really well. Oh, and by the way, you can hide the on-screen keyboard by clicking the little keyboard icon in the top corner. So as long as what you're looking at doesn't need you to be super accurate with where you click on the screen, then the touch screen can work really, really well. Equally, I've got my little cross icon here that I can use to close the full screen view. So if I just hit that, then that goes back to my main view. It brings up the on-screen keyboard again, and that's a bit annoying. And again, I can't find a lot of settings to help with that, but at least you do have an easy way to cancel it. Equally, if you have a web application that runs full screen, such as this one, which is my weather station app, again, you can see that this works really, really well. If I zoom back a little here, so you can see the whole frame, you can see that if I did have this just sitting around in my house somewhere, it would be a really neat little display. You could also use this to drive such applications as a virtual photo frame or something like that, and it would work really effectively. And so there you go. A little touchscreen available for your Raspberry Pi, relatively little cost, and it works really well.
Sure, the on-screen keyboard isn't great, but that's software. There are other on-screen keyboards that you could potentially install. I just wanted to demonstrate the built-in one on the Raspberry Pi here, just to show its frailties when you're using it on a screen that is this small. If you use it on a bigger screen, it actually works pretty well. If you want to use this screen as a touch device for something where you don't have to be super accurate with your clicks, it works brilliantly. And of course, for anything that is running just a full screen display, such as my weather station or a photo viewer, those kind of applications would work absolutely fantastic. It's a beautiful, clear little display, and it's got quite good viewing angles as well. You don't have to be right in front of it to be able to see what's shown. So I'm a big fan. Now, I also want to make it absolutely clear here, this is not a sponsored video. No money changed hands between me and Elecro. I bought it with my own money from Amazon. So I'm in no way trying to promote the product or anything like that. This is just an honest review giving you my opinions on the product. But that's it for this video. Once again, if you like what you see here, please hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you want to see more and hit that notification bell so you can be told when I put a new video out. Let me know in the comments how you get on if you buy one of these small monitors and what you use them for. And as always, if you've got any ideas for other projects that you'd like to see me do in the future, put those in there as well. As I said in the top of the video, if you can see it in your heart to use the hype functionality to promote my videos, I'd be absolutely honoured. And indeed, any interaction that you have with the channel is always very, very greatly appreciated. Thanks so much for watching till the end. And until next time, bye for now. Thank you.